harmless, but uh, as we will see, uh, it was not. Uh, and in fact, their uh, instantiations of ring LWE, they just leak exact equations in the secret. Okay, so it's like learning without errors. Um, and in particular, you can just use linear algebra then to recover the secret. So this is kind of the conclusion. So you can recover the entire secret uh, with near certainty. Although it remains an, a legitimate question whether this evaluation at one attacks uh, apply. Okay, but the main conclusion is that there is no, uh, it's not a threat to ring LWE as it may have uh, appeared to be. Okay, um, so to talk about this, I will have to uh, explain to you a little bit what a ring LWE is. Uh, so to start with that, I will uh, talk about LWE because ring LWE is a ring version of this. So LWE is about uh, solving uh, linear systems of equations, uh, but the equation, and, and this is modulo P, so over the integers modulo P, over the field uh, FP. Um, uh, but these equations are not exact equations because otherwise one could just use the techniques of linear algebra like Gaussian elimination. But these equations are given with some errors. So every equation, uh, so, so this, this you can read as, as a bunch of linear equations, and every equation, so the bi that you are given is not the correct bi, it's not the correct outcome. Uh, the bi that you are given is the correct outcome plus some error ei that is sampled from some known distribution and that is uh, considered to be very small. Um, it's part of the problem that the linear part of your system, this will be important in a second, that the linear part is generated uniformly at random. So this is part of the problem. Uh, and it's also part of the model that an attacker or a person that wants to solve this problem uh, can ask for new equations indefinitely. Okay, so this is LWE. Uh, this is about, uh, was introduced by Regev about 10 years ago. Um, and it's, uh, so yeah, I rewrote this, this approximate version into an exact version by including this error vector here. This is the, the shape that I will use, uh, continue using. Um, okay, so two of the features of LWE and uh, two of the reasons why, they are, uh, why this problem is being uh, appreciated uh, a lot is that it uh, came along with a hardness proof, so to speak. So if you can uh, come up with an algorithm for solving LWE, you can also come up with uh, algorithms. This is a quantum reasoning, so that's quantum algorithms uh, to solve certain um, uh, well-known version of lattice problems, shortest vector type uh, problems. Okay, so this is one uh, reason why it's being appreciated. Another reason is that it turns out to be a very versatile building block for a lot of crypto. Uh, so fully homomorphic encryption is one of the main uh, applications, but as I said already, there's this quantum element in there, so it's believed to be quantum uh, secure. So for PQ crypto, uh, it's also being studied. Uh, there is one main drawback about LWE, and that's a key size issue. And so if you want to hide this secret, uh, which we think of, say, as a, a, a vector of length n, let's ignore the size of p for now, so this is something of length, length n that you want to hide, uh, well, you have to use this entire linear system as a public key. And so you need, like, uh, a public key of size n squared at least, uh, m, so the number of rows has to be strictly bigger than the number of columns. The system has to be overdetermined for the problem to be well defined. But let's think of this as size n squared. You need size n squared to hide something of size n, okay? And so people have tried to uh, solve this, and this is then what uh, the goal is of ring LWE. So let's first start with something which I call a ring-based LWE. Eh? So it's on purpose that I don't write ring LWE there. This is not, what I'm going to say now is not exactly ring LWE. But the idea behind using rings in LWE is as follows. Instead of thinking of our secret uh, yeah, as a vector of length n, we will think of it as a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1. Eh? So s0, s1 up to sn minus 1. We will encode it as s0 plus s1 times x plus s2 times x squared and so on. Okay? This is just a matter of language. It's two ways of writing down the same thing. Um, but of course, when you think of polynomials, you can try to multiply these polynomials. Now, if you multiply two polynomials of degree at most n minus 1, you will end up most likely with a polynomial exceeding that degree. And so you have to do it modulo some polynomial to get back to the, uh, the size you want. Okay? And this is a, a parameter in the system. This is this f of x, modulo which we are computing. Okay? So this is the integers modulo p. So here we also have integers modulo p. But now we also work modulo f of x. Yeah? Um, now, once you have set up this multiplicative uh, thing, so you have given the, the secret key space a ring structure, this is basically what happened, uh, you have a, a, a bunch of matrices that are uh, attractive uh, for our purposes, namely multiplication matrices. And so if you take a random such polynomial and you multiply the secret with this polynomial, you reduce the outcome modulo f of x, 
then in terms of the original vector notation, this will turn out to behave like a matrix multiplication, okay? Um, and the idea is to use such matrices. Uh, now, it's very important to be aware of the fact that these matrices are not random, okay? But this is the whole clue. To encode this entire matrix, which is of size n by n here, it suffices to, 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 uh, to save this, this polynomial you multiplied with, which is of size n, okay? And you save a factor n. This is the idea. Uh, so just to give you an idea of, of the flavor, uh, if you would work modulo x to the n minus 1, modulo this, this polynomial, uh, then the matrix of multiplication with A looks like this. Uh, okay, so uh, you have, it's, it's, like, it's what is called a circulant matrix. So you have this first column, and then the other columns are obtained from this first column by shifting them cyclically. And so obviously it suffices to know the first column to know the entire matrix. That's the idea. Yeah? Now this is kind of a bad example because of some potential threat uh, that is around. And these are exactly these evaluation at one attacks I wanted to talk about. So I will try to be very brief. This is just a standalone thing. If you don't get the details of this, this is not, uh, not important. Uh, the most important thing is that you know that this threat is around. So as soon as f of one is zero modulo p, for instance, if it's exactly zero, as is the case with x to the n minus one, right? this is exactly zero if you have evaluated it one, but if you have zero modulo p, then you have uh, a ring homomorphism. Right? So we have this secret key space, uh, but then we have a map from the secret key space to a much smaller space, fp, by evaluating these polynomials at one. Okay, so this is a, a well-defined map. Um, and whatever the map uh, is, uh, one can use it to, to, to convert uh, samples, ring-based LWE samples, to, you can evaluate everything at one, and this, this behaves well. This, is, this uh, condition is needed for this to behave well. And basically, because you are now in a much smaller space, you can examine, examine things exhaustively. I will, I will just go quickly over this. But you can examine things exhaustively and try to, 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 to discover um, non-uniform behavior. Yeah, and if you can play this game uh, in, the, in the right way, uh, you can probably uh, extract information about S evaluated at one. Yeah? So this is the sum of, this is, so recall, S is, uh, here, S evaluated at one is just the sum of the sum of the, the digits. Yeah? So you can hope to play this game to extract some information about uh, the sum of the digits. This is this class of attacks. It's not the main point of this uh, talk, so I will, uh, uh, yeah, not talk about um, these attacks any further. It's just important for you to know that they are around. Okay. And uh, so one safety measure measure one could take is to, to work with irreducible f of x. Like it's it already. Um, um, yeah, excludes a certain kind of uh, versions of, of this, this uh, uh, attack. But yeah, so for instance, x to the n minus one is excluded uh, with this because this has a factor x minus one. Uh, but the actual condition is that f of one is zero modulo p. And this is not entirely excluded by this irreducibility condition. In any case, from now on, we assume that f of x does not have non-trivial factors. Um, so what is ring LWE then? Well. We had this idea of replacing the linear part of our, our system with the matrix of multiplication. So the direct analog of LWE in this ring-based world would read like this. Eh? So we have this constant factor equals this matrix of multiplication times the secret plus some error. Now the direct analog of LWE would be as follows. Take these errors, take this EI independently and choose them at random and choose them small. This is what happens in LWE. So if you want to play this game literally, this is what you would do. Okay, so this is what is written here. Take them independently from the same distribution. This is like a normal distribution with a small uh, standard deviation. Uh, I've represented this distribution as a sphere. Just to, uh, this symbolizes the fact that in every direction, the distribution is the same. Okay, there's no, no preferred uh, direction. Uh, but this is not what ring LWE is. So this is important. Um, in particular, so the people that introduced ring LWE also gave like a security proof of this or a hardness uh, statement, but this hardness proof does not apply to this uh, version. Yeah? And in particular, also uh, evaluation at one attacks are known to work in certain special cases in this uh, setup. Yeah? This was by Eisentrager, Lauter, and Singer. Uh, so this setup is sometimes called poly LWE. So what is ring LWE then? Well, let's have a look at the samples again. So you see that I left some blank space here. This is because there's something to be filled in there. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we will plug in an n by n matrix that arises as a product of two n by n matrices. So I, I have a blue one and a red one. 
so the blue one is the canonical embedding matrix. I will not define what this is, uh, but the the basic point is that uh, the ring in ring LWE the, does not necessarily have a canonical representation. You might have two uh, polynomials defining essentially the same ring. Okay, and the previous version, the poly LWE one, is not robust to these kind of changes. And so there exists a sort of canonical representation of your ring, uh, and this is where you generate the errors, and then this matrix uh, pulls these errors back to the original setting. This is what this B inverse does. Okay, if you uh, have never seen this before, just there is a matrix there. Um, and then there's another matrix, uh, and this, so this is multiplication by the derivative of F at X. Okay, it's some multiplication matrix. Um, and the reason that this is there is that in actual um, uh, ring LWE, um, the authors propose to pick secrets from something called uh, the dual ring. Let's call it the dual ring, okay? Uh, but you can reformulate everything uh, in the original version, but then you have to put this matrix there. So this is basically uh, witnessing the fact that your actual secret space is not the ring that I mentioned. But you can reconvert everything into secrets living in that ring, but then this is the price you have to pay. Oh, sorry, I pushed the wrong button here. So this is where we were. Yeah. So there are two matrices: one for uh, going back from the from this canonical world to, to the world we are working in, and this is uh, to to compensate for the fact that we are sampling our secrets in the uh, in the ring. Yeah. Um, and then in this version, there is some hardness uh, statement that was proven. Okay. Um, now, we had this sphere uh, before. Now, I draw this ellipsoid um, because this factor, this matrix we put in front here, this might completely skew this spherical distribution. So the EI are still thought of as being sampled independently from the same distribution, so they are spherical. But then by applying this matrix uh, to these uh, guys, we will completely skew this. Eh? And so this, the, the errors in each coordinate, the resulting errors might not be independent, uh, so they're some might be bigger than others, so this is represented by this uh, ellipsoid here, okay? And it not only skews it, it also scales it up, yeah? So this is also very important. Uh, so this, as we will see in a second, this matrix, uh, this product of these two matrices is like a big matrix. It, on average, it, it scales things up a lot. So this, yeah, thank you. So this is um, uh, what I will explain uh, now. So let's have a better look at these matrices. So we have these two matrices. But one can prove that the determinant of this multiplication by f prime of x matrix has, uh, yeah, is, is, is a quantity called the discriminant. Uh, and if you know what the discriminant of a polynomial is, it's basically that, okay, but in absolute value. Uh, so it's uh, important to know that this in, in practice is a huge uh, quantity. Yeah, it's a very big uh, quantity in general. So this is what the determinant of this guy is. So this scales things up by a lot. Uh, on the other hand, the B inverse scales things down. Yeah? Uh, and the B scales in things down by a, a, a factor square root of delta. Yeah? The, so the determinant of B is the square root of delta, so the determinant of B inverse uh, is 1 over the square root of delta. Yeah? And so if you do the math, on average, you have 1 over square root of delta times delta, so you get square root of delta. Yeah? And so on average, your errors are being scaled up. Uh, and I put square root of delta to the power 1 over n here, and that's because there are n directions. So the determinant kind of takes the product of everything, if you want. Yeah? So in the average direction, your errors are being scaled up by this matrix uh, multiplication by this quantity. Yeah? But this is on the average. This is uh, very important. So we still have this uh, extreme skewness. Yeah? So in some directions, the scaling might be completely different than in other directions. Um, OK, so what did the people from uh, the provably weak instances of ring LWE do? Well. For convenience, they, they ignored the fact that we uh, actually have to sample our secrets from this dual space. So they sampled secrets in the original ring. Okay? It's not completely uh, clear to us how harmful this is. Uh, you can try this. Uh, but basically, uh, if you naively remove this matrix, because this matrix expresses the, the, fact that, expressed the fact that we had to pick secrets from the dual space, if you naively remove this matrix, then you have a problem. Okay? But because recall, the determinant of this guy is 1 over the discriminant. Yeah? So it scales down, and the discriminant is a huge guy, so you scale down massively, and you have a risk that your errors will become just, uh, yeah, almost nothing, and that you, if you round uh, your equation, then you get an exact linear system, and you can solve it using linear algebra. Yeah? So this is definitely not a good idea. Uh, so what is the remedy they took? 
Well, the remedy is that to compensate for the scaling down by one over square root of delta, they scaled up again by square root of delta. Yeah? So this compensates. But this is only on average. Yeah? So maybe uh, a look ahead. So remember that this matrix had determined delta. So from the, from the ring LWE point of view, a more natural choice would have been to scale up by delta instead of square root of delta, right? But they only scaled up by square root of delta, which is OK, which takes care of things on average. Um, so this is like the version they took. Um, so this is what I say. This factor compensates on average. But remember this Qness. It might be that this B inverse scales things down in one direction much more than in other directions. And then if you scale everything up, like in every direction with the same scalar, in some directions, this, this compensation factor might be, might be far insufficient. Uh, and this is indeed what happened. Eh? So as we will see on the next slide, in some directions, so for instance, in the last so many coordinates, uh, you're scaling up by square root of, uh, of delta to the 1 over n is far insufficient, and your errors will still be very small there. Yeah? Uh, so this is a graph uh, showing this for a concrete uh, example they gave. So they gave uh, this example. Uh, I, I ignored the size of, of, uh, of the, the Gaussian from which you start. It's something like uh, 8 uh, in their case. It's, it's something O of 1, say. But they work modulo this polynomial and modulo this prime. So remember that f of 1 is indeed a 0 modulo p, which, is, which they needed for the evaluation at one attack. But for us, this is not relevant. Um, but the, the, the crucial observation is that for this polynomial, this ellipsoid is extremely skew. Eh? So in some directions, this will be very big. In other directions, this will be very, very small. Yeah? And this graph illustrates this. Eh? So of course, this is a three-dimensional ellipsoid, but now we are in 256-dimensional space, so we cannot draw the ellipsoid. Uh, but we can represent it like this. So for instance, in the coordinates corresponding to the, to the constant term, eh? so this is one dimension, say, we have um, uh, a distribution. This is an empirical thing, but you can make this, uh, yeah, make this work in theory also. You have a distribution with basically um, standard deviation 400. Yeah, but then in another, di in another direction, so like in the term corresponding to x to the 200, we basically have zero. Well, this is because this scale is so, so, so small. Okay? So let's zoom in maybe. Yeah? For instance, in the, in the 210th dimension, uh, we have a, uh, our ellipsoid is such that in that direction, uh, the, the standard deviation is, is something like uh, 0.3. Um, and so now have a look at this line at height one half here. Okay, so this is, if we will round, yeah, if we will round our uh, samples, yeah, then everything that goes below one half will become identically zero, right? And so, indeed, if we see, if we round our samples, then the last so many guys. Yeah, uh, so this is three times the standard deviation, so with 99.9% .9 uh, certainty, your errors will indeed be below that brown line, and so definitely below this, this black line. And so if you round, like with very, very high probability, you will round this down to zero, and you will get exact equations in this last uh, coordinate. Yeah? So let's have a, a look here. So these guys here, in this, if you elaborate this, and then you look at the last so many uh, coordinates, and you round them, then they will become zero with very, very high probability. Uh, and this gives you exact equations in the sequence. So the last so many equations of the linear system will be exact equations. And so if, if you have enough samples, uh, you will be able to, to just break the system using uh, linear algebra. OK? So this is the summary. Um, so evaluation at one allowed these people to uh, recover S of one, as, as we announced. And they had to use about 20 samples with a success rate of about 20%. But after rounding, the last n over 7 equations roughly become exact. Eh? And so if you have 7 or 8 samples, you have basically n enough equations to, to apply linear algebra. Uh, and this, this then will allow one to recover the secret exactly. Okay? Um, and similar remarks apply to their uh, other examples. OK, so let me conclude with some uh, thoughts. Uh, so currently, evaluation at 1 is not a threat, contrary what they, to what they claim. But it's still an interesting question. Okay? So if you remedy their examples, if you scale things up properly, uh, then they are not counterexamples anymore. Okay? So the work has to be redone. Uh, but it's still uh, not entirely clear whether it's possible or not. Um, if it would be possible, it would be very interesting. Um, so you might say the problem is in the fact that they used this non-dual, that they removed this, this matrix A, that, so that they sampled the secrets from a non-dual 
uh, thing. But this skewness is not really uh, a phenomenon that is specific to this non-dual world. Eh? So we had this matrix that was very, we had that this matrix was very skewed, but this one can also be extremely skewed. Uh, and so to us, it's more a matter of insufficient scaling than, than of dual versus non-dual. Of course, the fact that they made this mistake was a bit because of the confusion there. Um, but still, this is uh, a related question. Uh, if we would have scaled uh, by this instead of by the square root of that to compensate for the removal of this factor, do we then get a, an, an equally hard or a provably hard uh, version of ring LWE or not? Okay. Um, another interesting remark is that uh, if you have a look here, so these errors are very small, but these are very big. And if you now scale things up properly, so that to make these big, yeah, then these will become huge. Uh, and because we are working modulo p, uh, things will start uh, wrapping around modulo p, and the first errors will become indistinguishable from uniform, which for most LWE applications or ring LWE applications is a problem. Uh, and so these polynomials are useless for, for most applications. That's, a, that's maybe an interesting observation. And then the last uh, thing is that the cyclotomic case, um, which are the main candidates, so cyclotomic polynomials are the main candidates for finding their way to cryptographic practice, I guess. Uh, they seem naturally uh, protected to this kind of uh, geometric world. I will not go into the details of this, but uh, for them, for these polynomials, this insufficient scaling would have probably still been sufficient. Yeah. I will stop here. All right, questions? Uh, what happens to your work if you just look at PLWE and you get rid of the B matrix entirely as well? Uh, yeah, then we cannot conclude anything. So, yeah, poly LWE is a bit more secure against insufficient scaling if you want, and, uh, because you don't have this matrix B that skews everything. Uh, but it, there's no security proof for it. So, yeah. <laughs> Have you observed the geometrical growth for other rings like the N true prime rings? Uh, no, we have not investigated that. Uh, for the x to the n plus x plus one, for instance. So if your if all your roots are roots of unity, then you don't have this geometric growth. Basically, as soon as your zeros of your defining polynomial are not roots of unity, uh, then this, this B matrix is essentially a van der Monde matrix, or the inverse of a van der Monde matrix. And so you have all these exponents there, and as soon as you plug in roots that are not roots of unity, you have like some exponential growth in that matrix, and this is what is reflected in the graph. So it would be interesting maybe for x to the n plus x plus 1. Uh. All right, let's thank the speaker again.